This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. When we are talking about souls, we're talking about great humans. It's very important to remind ourselves of, of that tree of life that we are part of, being branches of this amazing tree of souls, oak of life. There are few ways that the souls are passing from one generation to the next. And we, as humans, I think it's very important for us all to understand how we came to be who we are today it can be very helpful for us to understand some secrets and to know some more about the nature of our souls and where are we coming from and how. So, we know that the first souls were the souls of Adam and Eve, Adam Vechava, the first man and first woman. Now, when we're mentioning them, we're talking about gigantic souls. We're talking about something that is greater than the wide world. We're talking about something that you cannot understand its size, how wide and large and big and great they were. They were not like one of us. We are like fleas on their backs. We're like one hair on their on their heads like there is basically almost no connection between who we are today how we look today to where it's all started because we are talking of thousands of years of development or of changings of the main ocean of souls that is divided to rivers that are divided to more and more um, rivers and, and, and small streams of, of water, like a tree that has his trunk and from it large branches are growing so you can still see the connection but after those branches are bringing more branches and those ones are bringing more and more and more today after so many years it's hard to find the connection from those fragile thin branches about to fall that we are on that tree of life but still when those souls brought down to the world their children so a very wide portion of their soul, of their spirit, passed to the next generation. Like the inner fibers, the inner power of that trunk that is growing into the next level of branches. And those are their children, that's the second generation. And then comes the third. Now, it's not only to remember the history, who were our ancestors and from which family we came out to the world. It's to understand qualities of the spirit. For an example, I'll give you a few points to think. Details on that amazing couple, Moses and Tzipora, his wife, for an example. Tzipora, the wife of Moses, she 
was a convert. She joined Judaism, she joined the family of Israel, the holy nation of Israel as the wife of Moses. But her journey to convert started even before that she knew Moses was alive. In the beginning there was a woman named Batya. Batya, she was the daughter of Pharaoh and Batya She's been called Batya, the daughter of Hashem. Why? Because when the Bible is telling us that Batya went to the Nile and over there she saw Moses, she saw Moses in his, how you call that? Basket. basket. In his basket floating on the Nile. So her intention was to go and to be purified and to convert to Judaism, to Israelism. She wanted to be part of Am Yisrael. That was her intention. She came to the water to wash herself from the foreign faith of the house of her father. She was the main first woman that converted, except of Sarah. That Sarah, she was the first one with Abram, her husband, that both of them like changed, converted, went to somewhere new, somewhere else. Now, Batya Bat Paro, the daughter of Pharaoh, even though that she was the princess and even though that she was raised in the palace over there in that royal kingship of Egypt, she realized that there is a huge mistake over there and she decided to uproot herself from her foreign roots, from her family and to join that holy nation of Israel that she recognized in them holy sparks, holiness and purity in their characters, in the way of their faith, in the way of their behavior and she decided to join them, to become one of them. Now, when she took that decision, something great, spiritual, took place in the world and the light of her conversion affected the wide world. And one of the first results were Tzipora, was Tzipora, the wife of Moses, that she was the daughter of Jethro, Yitro, that he was one of the advisors of Pharaoh. Now, you're learning history. It's good. It's a good thing. You ate, you davened mincha, my riv. Now you learn a little bit of history. It's good. When she decided, Bat Yabat Paro, to convert, there was a huge noise in the world because the beautiful daughter of Pharaoh walked away from their faith, from their foreign faith, believing in their idols and all of those ways of, of that they were worshipping and she walked away from all of that. And that decision made a huge noise in the world. Now Jethro was always coming to Egypt with his family because every time there was an event in the palace or something, he would take his family, his children, he was working for Pharaoh, he was one of the advisors of Pharaoh, and he would come. And in one of the times, his daughter, that was still a very young girl, two years old or so, she saw the light of Batya Bat Paro. And when she saw the light of Batya Bat Paro, she fell in love with Batya Bat Paro's light the illumination, the inspiration, the faith, the humility, the good midot of Batya Bat Paro went into the heart of Tzipora, the daughter of Jethro. And she decided to convert. Now that's an amazing thing that happened. While she was there, still as a little girl, she saw Moses because Batya, she found Moses 
in the Nile, on the Nile, and she took him in, and she raised him as a prince of Egypt, and he was there, and Tzipora saw him, and the Midrashim are telling us that Tzipora, she saw and she recognized and she knew Moses already from Egypt before that Moses ran to the desert and found himself over there with her family. Before of that, she already knew him, and she already fell in love with him as a little girl. And she knew in her heart that her destiny is about to change, and that she is about to convert, and that she is about to join the holy nation of Israel. Now think about that woman, Sipora, that from a tiny age, her heart is a flame of fire, pure soul, that desires only good, that she has a fantastic role model in front of her eyes, Batya Bat Paro, and she wants to be like her, and she wants to dedicate her life to the truth, and to the faith, and to purity, and to holiness, and to all good actions and deeds in the world, and she wants to be only in that path of holiness and purity. And in a certain situation in her life, Moses is saving her life. And after a while, the Midrashim are saying that Moses found himself in the desert, ran away from Egypt after killing the Egyptian officer, and he found himself running to Hashem. And over there, in the desert, he find, find himself lost and Tzipora saved his life. For 10 years, she was feeding him in prison. He was kept in prison in a pit in the middle of the desert by her father Jethro that was scared that Moses will be fine found in his place. He was terrified from Pharaoh, so he threw him to the jail for 10 years, and Tzipora was feeding Moses behind the back of her father, against the will of the community, against every kind of logic. She is running, swimming against the stream, saving the life of that holy person, Moses. And she loves him, and she cares about him. After 10 years, she went to her father and she told him, Do you remember that person that you threw to the prison and you forgot about him 10 years ago? He said, Yes. Is he still alive? She said, Yes. And not only that he's still alive, he's praying for you every day to his God in heaven. So she came for the side of Moses and saving the life of Moses and returning a favor. And she is all dedicated, pure soul with pure love, with a noble purpose in life, to do the right thing. Now that amazing woman finds herself converting and getting married with Moses and then going out from the house of her family with Moses back to hell, back to Egypt, to go and to be the first enemy of Pharaoh and his, and his army, and to go and fight. And she's doing it and taking her two babies with her, and the devil is attacking them when they're in a certain hotel on the way to Egypt in a place that they were resting, and she is saving her husband and saving her children from a gigantic snake that is about to kill them, that it's the devil itself, it's the angel of death that came to try to take one of her children on that journey back to Egypt to save the Israeli nation, something that she is not really supposed to do, but all of her life is dedicated for that noble purpose, and that's what she's doing, dedicating her life to that noble cause, to her man, the one that she loves, based on the faith that she believes in heaven, in the good, in Hashem, in the Creator, in the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, and she's following the ancestors, the holy mothers, and she's going all the way. Moses is there in Egypt and she's backing him up. She's helping him over there. And for a few years they're there in Egypt. It took several years until the redemption took place and they found themselves out of Egypt after suffering from horrible decrees and hiding and being undercover and hidden and suffering from all the poverty that they could suffer over there. And then they're finding themselves out of Egypt after a huge redemption and amazing salvation. And it's written on Tzipora that 
In one of the days, Moses asked Hashem, what will be with my children? And Hashem answered to him, look, they cannot be the next generation of leaders because they haven't worked enough, purified themselves enough to become the next generation, like the ones that will take the leadership from you. And the torch is about to pass to Yoshua Binun, and they won't be able to continue your path, your way. It's written in the Midrash that Zipporah couldn't handle this situation, and she and both of her children ran back to the house of her father, to the house of her family. And that's basically where the story of Zipporah finished for us. We don't know anything about Zipporah anymore. What we do know, we know that she made a huge way walking and running and traveling and sacrificing and dedicating and doing everything she can until one day she hears, I'm not saying that it was a wrong decision, I'm just trying to let you think a little bit what that poor woman feels alone in the desert. Her husband, holy husband, the man of God, must continue with his mission and she is all alone with those two almost orphans, needs to go back to the house of her father and she's doing it and they're disappearing from the map. We don't know anything about them except of one thing that we do know that one of the children of Moses few hundred years later was worshipping idols in the first temple. We know about him that he was not so pure. We know about him that he was not so righteous, not so much known in his holiness. One of the children of Moses and all of the rest of them, and we're talking today of millions of people because it's part of the blessing of Moses that his children will become a huge nation. All of them are out of the territory of Israel. They're not receiving the Nachala, inheriting the land of Israel with Am Israel when Am Israel went into the Holy Land of Israel. They're out there with Jethro and his family in the desert with their frustrated, broken mother, Tzipporah. And she hears in the news, in the end of her life, that even though that she sacrificed so much, Moses was not able to enter to the Holy Land of Israel, and he disappeared in the desert. And no one knows even where he's buried. <laughs> no, that's how Tzipporah is finishing her inspiring life of dedication. She did everything that was possibly done by her. All the effort, all the sacrifices, all the tears, all the risks, everything she did and found herself as a widow in her life without her husband, with her children, in the camp of her father, in the desert, not inheriting the Holy Land and their kids are about to become non-Jews and to disappear from the map for, forever, who knows like what will take place in the future to come. If in the redemption their children will be redeemed or if they won't, no one knows. Now, to bring us back to understand about the souls, figure that woman Sipora for yourselves in your mind and understand that that gigantic soul of Sipora when she passed to the world to come, part, main part of her soul was divided to thousands on thousands of smaller souls that each and every one of those parts is also huge and great compared to what it we understand as today as huge souls. And those souls been sent to the next generations. And they are the souls that are continuing the light of Tzipora. Now, let's say that Tzipora, she was a little bit upset, a little bit frustrated, with a little bit of frustration. So certain souls will take that 
part of her spirit, of her cargo, spiritual and emotional cargo, and they will be that forever. Now, if she was in a certain moment biting her lip in anger and in frustration and doesn't know what to do with herself, so a certain part that with that quality, with that, with that way of thinking, with that cargo of, of, of feelings, is about to be sent to different locations in the world as different women with different missions, with different goals and destinies in life. And they will all gonna bite their lip forever <laughs> because that's who they are. Because they are 1% of that noble woman, Zipporah. And if she was also dedicated and loving and generous and kind, so you're going to find those giants, giant women, godly women, that are going to love forever and going to dedicate forever and going to sacrifice forever without even knowing who they are in the root of their soul. But they are the love and the passion and the honesty and the dedication of Tsipora. And one of them want to come in the, to the world in Russia and one in Switzerland and one in Morocco and one in Tibet and one in Uzbekistan and one in the Holy Land of Israel. And you won't know. And those gigantic souls that every one of them is only 1% of the complete soul of Tsipora also gonna divided after 70 years or 80 years of lifetime to the next generation and gonna become new 1000 souls after 500 years, after 700 years. And today we are that 1% out of 1% out of 1% out of 1% of those noble ancestors that brought us out to the world, down to earth. And we must understand how that process is taking place in our lives. Because instead of blaming ourselves and trying to analyze ourselves and to judge ourselves and criticize ourselves, we must focus on the reality of who we really are. Now, for an example, there was that righteous man, the Ramchal Kadosh, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato. It's written on him, on Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, that a huge part of his soul came from the soul of Moses. That's why he was named Moshe, Rabbi Moshe. But also he was named Rabbi Moshe Chaim, Chaim, because a huge part of his soul came from Rabbi Chaim Vital, that was the main student of the Ariya Kadosh. Now that person, Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, is carrying inside of himself a huge portion from those gigantic souls of Moshe Rabbeinu and also Rabbi Chaim Vital. And he needs to deal with completing the mission of Moses in his lifetime, in the life of the Ramchal, of Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, and completing that portion that he inherited from Rabbi Chaim Vital that lived five or seven hundred years before of him, or two or three hundred years before of him, to complete the mission that been treasured in him, in his name, in his destiny, in his generation without the memory of him being Rabbi Chaim Vital, without remembering that he contains 1% of the soul of Moses or 20% or half percent of the soul of Moses. He won't remember that. But when he will be honest to feel who he is and to understand the waves and the movements and the changes in his spirit when he talks, when he hears, when he listens, when he cares, when he sees, when he recognizes, when he forgets. When he will be aware to the qualities of his spirit, he will find the ability to complete the mission that he's been sent to complete. 
by being truthful to who he is, loyal to his inner voices, aware to the sound of his soul, of his spirit, he will find the tools to accomplish the mission that's been given to him by heaven. And you don't know who you are, but it doesn't mean that you are not as great as our ancestors. Because you are part of that tree of life and the inner fibers, the spiritual fibers that are building you, that designed your character, are being pulled from thicker branches, that being pulled and came out to the world from thicker and thicker branches. And the beginning of those branches is in the holy trunk. Those are the souls of Adam and Eve. Those are the souls of our ancestors, of Abraham and Sarah, and the rest, and the holy tribes. And part of the tribes are out of Israel, like we know, the ten tribes found themselves out of the kingship of Judah, and they're not included today in the Jewish nation, and they're out there, and they belong to different nations, hard to recognize, and the children of Moses, like we learned today, like we read in the Midrashim, they're not part of Am Israel. The majority of the children of Moses are not part of the nation of Israel, for sure not part of the Jewish nation as known today. They're out there. There are millions of people. And Moses is in heaven crying for his children when they're walking in the desert of Afghanistan. And no one knows them. And no one can recognize them. Who can? Those holy people in heaven. The Creator Himself that knows all the mysteries and all the things that have been forgotten. That He remembers and knows it all. And you yourself can be aware to who you are. And they themselves can recognize, can recognize the godliness and holiness that is treasured inside of them. If they will listen to the inner voice of their souls, when they will be ready and prepared to become aware to their real identity, to their real character. Now the spirit of Mashiach, the spirit of the real Mashiach that will come and will blow away all the sadness and all the depression and all the negativity from the world and will bring a new spirit of awakeness to the world and will cheer up people to come back in Tshuva, to come back to the place that they've been took out from, to come back to their true selves, when He will come, He will refresh the memory of all those lost souls to recognize their godly roots, the roots of their spirits. And suddenly they're going to understand. They're going to recognize themselves. They're going to say, No, I know who I am. And they're going to join the nation of Israel, the real nation of Israel. They're going to join the rest of those holy souls that have been trapped in the trap of the evil inclination. And they will recognize their good qualities and their real honesty and their real holy foundation of their souls. And they will become who they meant to be. And they're going to receive from heaven the blessing and the gift to go and to build and to enjoy Beit HaMikdash and to serve the Creator with honesty. And we, and I'm talking about myself and friends of mine, as Jewish people, except of doing tshuva and be ashamed of who we are and the way that we behave, we have nothing else to do. Because we are those ones that are blocking the doors of tshuva from the wide world. We're not those ones that are opening the doors. We're not welcoming at all. We're not doing our job at all. We're not even close to do our job. We're not positive. We're not smiling. We're not inviting. We're not calling. We're not nice. We're not kind. We're nothing. We're just bumps. We're just lazy. We're selfish. We're ignorant. We don't understand who we are, what's the real purpose of our life, to be real servants of heaven, really to do good with no end, to open the opportunity for people to come closer to heaven, 
always to offer, always to suggest, always to give, always to help. We're so disconnected from the real nature of who we are, who we've sent, been sent to be, that we're just like closing the doors and the opportunities from people that are thirsty and are waiting for an opportunity to come closer to heaven and to reconnect themselves to their real source, to who they really are. And we must do tshuva with all the power in the world to come back to our true nature and to work on our attributes and to fix ourselves to be kind and to be nice and to be positive and to invite and to call and to smile to every person and to open the eyes of those souls to understand who they are. That's the mission of our lives. The mission of our life is not to take care of ourselves. The mission of our life is to see what we can do for others. How we can climb out of our inner prison, from our inner fears. And not to be so scared, and not to be so terrified, and not to be so worried all the time. And we must climb out of that filth of impurity, of being selfish of being sad, of being upset all the time, of being angry and frustrated all the time. Forgetting that we are on a mission. I suggest to every person to take a certain time and to dedicate that time for an inner observation, to look deep into your true self. The way to do it is simple. You just need to find a quiet place and to listen to yourself with honesty. You just need to listen. You need to talk to yourself like you're talking to your best friend, to be open and revealed, sincere and honest with yourself. Ask yourself, what in the world am I doing here in this lifetime? How can I dedicate my life a little bit more to the real purpose of life? What else can I do really to illuminate the light of heaven, to shine the light of truth to the world? How can I assist? How can I help? How can I do more, more than I do? When you will give that small effort, when you will give that small push, you're going to find yourself in a much deeper place inside of yourself. You're going to recognize yourself much, much more. You're going to understand yourself much, much more. And you're going to heal yourself much, much more. Because things that were bothering you before won't bother you again. Because when you're going deeper, so the external layers that your mindset was aimed to one hour before won't touch you anymore because you're going to be located in an inner set of mind. You're going to be in a different place spiritually and emotionally. Those things that are bothering you today won't bother you tomorrow. Even if they're going to keep on standing in the same place, you won't be there anymore. You won't be there because you're going to humble yourself and you're going to understand yourself and you're going to stop criticizing yourself and blaming yourself because Zipporah, the wife of Moses, she was not only an angel, she was also a woman. She was also upset. She was also angry. And not only Zipporah, also Moses failed at least five times in his life in anger. And all of the righteous people, there is no one righteous person in this world that can do only good without failing, without sinning. All of them failed at least once in their life. All of them, King David and his wife Bathsheba and King Solomon and all of them. Every single one of them, the Torah is opening our eyes to see that they failed in something that they had a failure in their life. And what that it means is that that piece of their soul, that that line of, of, of character passed to the next generations. And it might be part of who you are today. You might carry a certain anger that started 3,000 years ago in a certain family of a holy person that you're not aware to your connection to him and it's still your mission to fix that part 
today because you are his child and you as his child is appointed to complete his mission in this world and to fix his failures and when you accomplish that when you're going to fulfill your destiny you will recognize the fact that all of those issues that you were handling with, that you were dealing with, were your connection to your ancestors. It means that they were your blessings all the way. You will be rewarded on fixing those things and you will enjoy the reward. You will find the benefit and the satisfaction of completing your family tree in those points that you are pointed on. And you will find the satisfaction and joy from life. And you will heal all those branches that you came out from. And they will all enjoy and will be rewarded in heaven by your merit, by your dedication. And you will be the one to enjoy that blessing. And you will feel it. And you can feel it already today when you're honest. You can feel an inner happiness when you are completing yourself, when you're finding things that you lost, when you come to deep understandings of things that were not solved for you until today. You're achieving finally a deep happiness. A feeling of completion is filling you from within. And this is the sign that you are walking in the right path, that you're achieving the goals that you've been sent to achieve that you find more and more answers to questions that you have, that you find salvations in your life, even in small things. When you see the individual supervision of the Creator on you in life, that's a clear message from heaven that the Creator tells you, I love you, I'm with you, I'm supporting you, I'm building you, I'm aiming you, I'm carving the way and the path for you. I'm supporting you and protecting you and helping you and assisting you. And every one of us can see those sparks in his lifetime. All of us, we can see those points of light. And we must follow those sparks and to continue straightening our path. And the way to do that is with honesty. Is with real honesty. To talk to yourself and to talk to the Creator like you talk to your best friend. Simple, deep and meaningful conversation that is discussing the things that are bothering your mind right now. Taking care of the subjects and the issues that are troubling your feelings right now. Things that you don't know how to deal with, take them, uplift them from the daily place of, of, of them and bring them to the table and start dissecting them. Start investigating your issues, your patterns. Start talking to Hashem. Start talking to yourself. Why am I falling in the same place every Monday and Thursday? Why am I failing in the same problems? Why am I so scared from those similar situations? Why I cannot express my feelings? Why in the world I'm stuck with that issue? Why money doesn't come? Why this house doesn't work? Why the car doesn't run? Why the job? I always need to be relocated. Why and why and why? Go to the depths of your problems with Hashem's light. It means with faith that there is a reason for it. That those problems came for a purpose for you to fix. That there are some mental and spiritual and emotional problems, failures that you must take care of. That you need to learn how to confront your fears. That you need to learn how to defend yourself. How to protect yourself. How to fight for the poor. How to, to help other people. How to be more generous, more kind, nicer. Those are the missions of your life. And when you will deal with them. For an example, you find yourself in a problem. That you're not happy to go to your work, to your job. You have issues over there with some employees, with some colleagues. Great. Go deeper. 
Don't say, no, I must stop going to that job. No, I'm going to look for another job. Leave that flat layer of your life of excuses, of justifying yourself, of blaming others. Go deeper. Try to take this situation and ask yourself, why am I so bothered from that person? Why that boss is terrorizing me? Why am I so scared to say no when I don't want to? Why is it too hard for me to wake up? Why is it too hard for me to stand up for myself? Why am I not doing what I need to do? Okay, I'm scared. Okay, I'm afraid to be hurt. Okay, I'm terrified. Okay, I'm lost. Okay, I, I don't know what. You'll find about yourself. Now deal with it. How you deal with it. You pray for it, you talk about it, you expose it to the light. Instead of denying it and hiding it and shoving it to a hidden place of no, they're all evil, no, they're corrupt, they're, they're bad, no, me, I'm not, no, I can't deal with it. Instead of running away from your life problems, bring them to the table of surgery and make that surgery finally. Heal yourself. Say to yourself, okay, that's my problem. I'm terrified from authority. I am lost with money issues. I don't know how to take a decision. I lost my independence. I don't know who I am. I'm scared to express my thoughts. I'm terrified to be rebuked and to be ashamed and insulted on my ideas. I'm afraid to express my my creativity. I don't want to use my talents because I don't want to be abused and hurt and insulted. And I don't know what you'll find. Take that problem because that's the real problem that you found. Today you decided to quit your job, but the real problem is not the job. The real problem is that you're afraid to express your feelings to your partner, to your boss, to your colleague, that you're afraid to be hurt, that you're afraid from failure. That's the real problem why today you decided to quit your job, right? So instead of quitting the job, deal with this problem. Take the root of the problem, deal with the truth of your life issues, bringing up your problems and now take care of it. And if you don't know how to take care of it, there's no problem with that. I don't know how to deal with my fears. It's talking about anxieties. I'm terrified. I feel like I'm, I'm losing my mind. I'm going to freak out. I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay, great. Take, if that's the deepest layer that you could find, and you cannot break it down more, you cannot go deeper. Over there, that's it. You're scared to touch. You cannot deal with that. That's already burning. Terrified. Okay, great. Take it. Pray for it. Talk to Hashem about that problem. Tell Him, listen, me, I can't solve that issue. Like, no way. I'm not touching it. I'm terrified. I'm not... You help me. I need your help. I did my side of the job. I walked all the way in until that core of the problems of my life. More than that, I cannot do. It's going to explode in my face. I know it's going to hurt me. It's going to destroy me. I'm not able to open. It's, it hurts too much. Heal me. Help me to deal with that issue. You're going to see wonders in that point. You're going to be healed. Your prayer will be answered 100%. Why? Because that was a prayer of truth. To say to Hashem, listen, I must find another job. You're making up stories. You're lying. You're not dealing with the truth. You're plastering your life. You're denying your reality. You're trying to run away from the real mission of your life that you need to deal with your problems. That you need to solve all your issues. And by that you're going to pull blessing to all that holy tree that you're coming from. And not only to them, also to yourself and to all the beloved ones that are attached and affected by you. And your movements in life and your spiritual developments in life. And your emotional growth. It's their blessing. When you will be honest about your life journey. And you're going to take your issues to prayer, going to uplift them to level of faith. 
You're going to believe that they are the mission of your life. That they are the things that you need to take care of. And you're not going to remove the responsibility, just you're going to try to bring heaven to assist you to take the responsibility in the right way and not in a radical way. Then the blessing of heaven will hover upon you and will heal all your wounds and will remove all the obstacles from your life because the Creator is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So we must work on ourselves to become truthful, to express the real feelings, the real emotions, the real thoughts, the real fears, and to deal with them with honesty. To find that good friend and to talk to him. To find ourselves and to become good friends with ourselves and to talk to ourselves. To find the Creator and to talk to him. To find the right mentors, the right teachers to guide us and to help us to heal our own spirits. And not to cooperate with the dark side of negativity that is criticizing and breaking and, and investigating and hating and blaming and rejecting and, and, and destroying our self-esteem means dividing us from who we really are. Because we are, even though we're fragile, we're honest and sincere and nice and kind souls. But we're too scared to express the fragile light of our spirits because we're afraid to be hurt again, to be ashamed again, to be insulted again. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid of the heat. We're afraid. But when you're with Hashem, you don't need to be scared anymore. But the way to connect yourself to Hashem is with truth. Because the name of Hashem, Hashem Elokechem Emet. Hashem Elokim Emet. That's His name. He is the God of truth. You want connection with the Creator, you must say the truth. As long as you're lying, you are separated from heaven. No matter which penguin suit you wear, how long your beard is, your side curls, your kippah, your neighborhood, your community, your synagogue, your rabbi, how many pages you finish every masechta, every masechet, every month, all those things, as long as you're a liar, doesn't mean anything. It's nothing. When you are not an honest person, no matter what you do, all fall into that trap of evil inclination. It's all going to the other side, to the sitracha. Because you're not honest. But when you're honest, when you're sincere, even a drop, even a tiny amount of effort that you put goes straight to the light, straight to heaven. This is why when Am Israel gave even a pin even a ring, even one tiny coin to Moses and he put those coins and he put those pins and he put the gold and the silver into the Mishkan, into the temple, it had an eternal reward for them because their donation, even if it was tiny, was installed into the Mishkan. It was already there. Even if you brought a tiny pin, you brought a penny to the Mishkan, it's an eternal generosity, kindness, charity that you brought and connected and linked yourself, bonded yourself forever to the Mishkan. But if you were separated from Moses, the man of truth, and you decided to take all your money and to worship Hashem with it, but without Moses, it doesn't consider anything. Because you were separated from the real will of heaven that Moses will build the Mishkan. So even if you built a nicer Mishkan with much more gold, much more nice, beautiful, shiny, I don't know what you put into it, it's all like you were worshipping idols all your life. Because it was not the real will of heaven. It was not the true thing to do. Because Moses was there and he was the one that was in charge on building the Mishkan. So you had to join him in his effort and not to do things on your own. So also today, we need to connect ourselves to the truth, to the real truth. And you can know the truth about yourself by checking yourself and being truthful. Check yourself 
Am I truthful while walking? Am I truthful now when I'm talking? Am I truthful? Am I say the, uh, do I really say the truth? Do I really do what I believe that I should do? Or that I'm lying, or that I'm hiding, or that I'm protecting myself, or maybe it's the truth now. No, I see that I need to protect myself right now. No problem. You don't need to go and kill yourself for no reason. But you need to connect yourself to the truth. And when you are connected to the truth, the truth is shining upon you and blessing you from within. Like I said, again, the mission is not over there in heaven. It's in the daily simple situations that we're dealing with. Over there you should reveal the real lines of your character, the real foundation of your spirit, to show that you are really an honest soul, a gentle and kind and nice soul. Thank you very much, Meshem. and bless us all to find ourselves and not to be lost in the darkness of exile. You might be from the soul of Tzipora, you might be from the soul of Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rachel, the wife of Rabbi Akiva, Rachel Imen. You don't know who you are. You should find the inner lines of your character and to think to yourself, what does it symbolize? What is it reflecting? What does it mean? Who I really feel that I am? And what, I'm, I, what, what makes me feel connected? Those are your real connections. What did you feel? That's what Hashem is putting for you to feel. If you feel connected to some righteous man, you don't need to doubt that. If you feel, oh, Lubavitch Rebbe, oh, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, oh, the Baal Shem Tov, the Baba Sad, I don't know. If you feel connection, there's connection. That's your connection. You don't need to doubt it. Now you need to ask yourself, if that connection is based on love, on appreciation, on good, on, on good, solid things, or that that connection is based on fear. Oh, I'm very connected to him because I'm terrified, because I'm lost, because I don't know what to do, and he's the only one that is abusing me, so I don't know like who else to turn to. So don't do that. <laughs> don't connect yourself to those ones that are forcing you for connection. Try to find a real inner and sincere connection to the truth from a source of inspiration. Of, 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 of good, of kindness, of partnership. And may the Creator bless us all with complete happiness and that all of our prayers and dreams will come true with no time. Amen. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.